today I'm going to do uh, a bit of a different style of talk. It's one of personal experience. So I'm going to talk about mentoring, uh, specifically lessons that I've learned when I was mentoring others in Go. Um, before I forget, any of the awesome Gopher images you're going to see uh, in these slides are taken from Ashley McNamara's GitHub, so all the credit for those go to her. Uh, so a little background about myself. Uh, I'm currently a software developer uh, at Crabriff. I work on the infrastructure team, and we pretty much exclusively work in Go. Uh, in a previous life, I was actually studying and pursuing a career in biochemistry. So I wasn't classically trained for the software industry. And in the past two to three years, I've actually had the privilege of being a Go mentor to a variety of people. So people of different uh, disciplines of software, people of different seniorities, and also different settings. So um, classroom settings, one-on-ones, and even remote sessions. So why am I giving this talk? Well, as I said, because of my background, um, I actually found the barrier to entry for this industry quite difficult, or at least for me, it was really challenging. And if it weren't for the help of a couple individuals who gave me such amazing mentorship, both inside and outside of the workplace, I wouldn't have experienced as much growth as I did. And it's really these experiences that drove my desire to want to make mentoring uh, or mentor mentoring more accessible and make the community of Go more welcoming to new people. Um, so throughout this talk, I'm going to be talking from personal experiences. Some of these things might be obvious. Some things might resonate with your own experiences. And hopefully, it'll spark some interest for mentoring for those who have uh, ever been on the fence. So the first lesson that I want to talk about uh, is that you don't need a badge to be a mentor. Uh, of course, this is obvious. But despite it being so obvious, this is one of the most difficult mental hurdles for me personally. Um, why did I feel that I needed the badge or validation that came with it of, of being a mentor? So I went ahead and thought of some possible reasons. And for me, the first thing was that there was no formal mentorship process at work. Um, I sort of got my start when I was approached with an opportunity. There was a new developer that joined, and they showed a lot of interest in the language of Go. And I was asked if I could lend a helping hand. Uh, so I foolishly agreed instantly, and I agreed, and instantly regretted it. <laughs> Uh, overwhelming thoughts of like, what the heck do I do? Um, what do I reference from? This isn't like joining a new company and contributing to a code base where I can just look at a different file and see what the style guide is. Another thing is I was super paranoid about how my actions would be perceived by others. Um, am I overstepping by taking this role? Uh, what does success look like? And what would happen to me if I wasn't successful? And lastly, much like I felt even signing up for this talk, uh, imposter syndrome played a big role. Um, there was so much uncertainty around um, if I was qualified, given my limited experience with the language, and could I actually deliver value to my mentee? So these are a lot of deep, pressing questions, and the answers, honestly, are different for the individual. Uh, for me, the only way I could mentally combat these feelings was sort of minimizing the feedback loop. I would s literally force myself to get feedback and uh, grasp at every shred of evidence that my mentee was being successful. And over, over time, I would incrementally get satisfaction that I played a small part in their success in their role. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is failure. Uh, failure is good for mentors. Now, this is actually a really common sentiment in life. Uh, failure obviously leads to growth. And especially, uh, it's a common thing in the software industry. However, I don't see it. Um, I don't see the topic being said in the context of being a mentor and what it means to fail as a mentor. And for me, it came down to two reasons. Uh, when you're defined as a mentor, you're automatically put in a place of authority. And with authority, there's more risk uh, when you fail. Uh, secondly, as a mentor, you're not actually responsible for your own success. You're responsible for the success of someone else in some way, shape, or form. So in any of these cases, um, to sort of emphasize this point, I looked back in the history books of my, my notes from two to three years ago. Um, just as an open question, can anyone identify what Go concept I'm trying to communicate in these pictures? Can, feel free to shout it out here. Go routines? Yeah, go routines, concurrency. I'm really relieved because I would be even more embarrassed if no one got it. Uh, but yes, I was trying to communicate go routines here. Um, here's a, another example. Uh, this one might be a bit more clear. Uh, it's obvious by the ball throwing analogy and build a bear conveyor belts, but this is channels. And 
I actually drew these illustrations with the intent of teaching another human being. And believe it or not, they actually understood it. The problem is, why am I talking about this in the context of failures? Well, because I don't think these illustrations at the time helped their understanding. If anything, it, it made it worse. And <laughs> this is when I learned that this wasn't the approach I should take. And the idea was I had to accept that failure is fine, even as a mentorship, even if you're in a position of authority, this is, a, this is a experience for both you and your mentee to grow together. Um, so that's failure. And the next topic is a bit controversial. It's don't teach best practices all the time. And this lesson was something I learned uh, in the workplace and mentoring in the workplace. Uh, I was always in the mindset of always writing the best, most maintainable and production ready code possible. Um, and basically, this was not the, unless your mentor, or mentee rather, is specifically focused with learning best practices and idiomatic go, our, our sessions were always more productive if I learned to hold back a little bit. And to sort of exemplify this, here's a super contrived example of some code, that's some random code that you might experience in a mentoring session. Uh, it doesn't really do anything, it just does something. And at the surface, there's really nothing wrong with this code. But a lot of people would agree, and some of those people would be the maintainers of this very popular Go wiki called Code Review Comments, I think. Um, some of you might be familiar, but they would argue that there's actually a lot of things wrong. Um, and some of you might have pointed them out as well. But I actually approached mentorship like this before. Um, I thought it was uh, my responsibility to point every little critique out, and I was doing a disservice to someone if I didn't. So it didn't matter if it was subjective or not. It didn't matter if it was a period or a missing, missing, um, missing comma, a typo, or a missing error check. I had to point out everything. This was not a path to successful mentorship, <laughs> I quickly learned. And I ended up spending more time not just talking about the, the things that were wrong, but the context surrounding those decisions. Why were they wrong? And ended up leaving no time for the actual subject matter. So, Really, I learned that it was the role of a mentor to learn what topics would detract from the, uh, what critiques would detract from the actual learning, and which ones would actually be effective. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is that there is no one recipe for mentoring. Um, so I saw this as an opportunity and sort of as a joke to try and make one. So I present to you uh, the eight things you must teach to be an effective Go mentor. So I follow this religiously, obviously, and has never failed. And it covers a bunch of things, like variable declarations, you have your control flow, you have data structures, cover against currency, and even abstractions, how to make proper abstractions with interfaces, and something about life cycles with context. So this is the time where you can pat yourself on the back, probably ask your manager for a raise. You deserve it. Obviously, that's not the case. And I wanted to speak to why the idea of a checklist was desirable, at least for me. And how can I share this knowledge of mentorship and all these experiences in a company that's scaling so quickly and new developers are joining? And how can I ensure that everyone that's new to the language has the same experience and guidance when it comes to navigating Go? For me, it came down to a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, the first thing is to really listen carefully and identify a specific goal. So just for the sake of example, a goal that, a very common one that uh, I'm approached with is, I just want to submit better PRs. So this is a really good baseline goal, um, but I prefer to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, first thing is, what about their PR um, is, is considered to be bad, or what improvements do they think they need to be making? Um, is it because that there's an abundance of comments on their pull request, and maybe that's lowering their confidence levels? Or is it the fact that they're taking a long time to address the feedback and they feel bad that they're holding their team back? Um, the next thing is, if you have to standardize something, I would rather standardize my intent instead of my solutions. So rather than throwing some cookie cutter um, solution that worked in a previous mentoring session, um, it's really appropriate to ask, well, what are the most common critiques in your pull request? Is it the fact that, let's say, it is the fact that there's a bunch of comments and it's really lowering their confidence? Well, what's the nature of these critiques? Is it um, stylistic in nature? Maybe it's a sign that we need better static analysis, and it's really not the fault of a single individual. Is it the fact that um, uh, maybe more centered around their design choices? Maybe it's pointing out a specific weak spot in their, 
in, in their um, tool set as a developer. And the last thing I want to talk about, and to me it's really the backbone of being a good mentor, is having empathy. And this might look like, um, in the following the example, this might look like their experiences with the code base. Uh, maybe they're being too hard on themselves or they're beating themselves up after one bad PR that was on a service that was 15 years old and didn't follow any of the same conventions. And maybe it, it's not a matter of hammering, oops, sorry, uh, hammering more fundamentals into them. So I don't think um, having empathy means having the right answers. But at the same time, empathy often means just putting yourself in someone's shoes, which I also think isn't enough as a mentor. It's not enough to just listen and understand. I think to truly be effective, you should approach um, the, the action of enabling your mentee with actionable feedback. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. No? Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I just, oh. Oh. hey, how's uh, it? How do you balance, uh, like, explaining things up front to you go figure it out and I'll go explain, <laughs> like, what you went wrong after the fact? Yeah, that's actually a, it's really, that's a really good question. I think it depends on the individual, of course. Uh, I think you take it as far as you can to the point where you're not really giving them the answer, of course. It's, um, I often like to get them to explain uh, from their understanding what, what a particular concept is. So let's, let's say we, we take um, like interface as an example. I would like to gather what their interpretation of an interface is. Um, so that any analogy I come up with is less removed from their, their vision of what the feature is, uh, rather than coming up with my own analogy that may or may not fit and really doubling down on that solution. Um, that, that approach has worked um, well for me. But it's different for every situation is different and really humbling. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah? What was the pedantic critique of the way Total was declared? Total? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's better practice to use like the zero value declaration, typically. Cool. Yeah, um, cool. What's the complaint with the context there? <laughs> <laughs> um, generally don't pass context like through, through a struct. Um, just, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I yeah. think we're, we'll, cool. we're good. Yeah. All right, cheers. So,